Hello, my name is Mark Anthony DuBose Jr. and I was born July 4th, 1986. Today I'm going to talk about something that I keep, keep hearing people say the same stuff that we want to see and hear something practical of how to be able to help my reactive dog. And that's where I think that in reality I'm going to say we're messing up because we're not sure what's actually happening and we're going to start to try to do things without understanding the root cause of why things are going on. If we don't understand the root cause of why it's going on, the techniques that you use, that you watch, you're like, oh, that worked for that dog, so it might work for mine. Can set you up for it, it can destroy you to the point that your dog will bite you to the point that you are convincing your dog now to bite another, another dog or a person or a kid and this is something where i'm going to say is with me i don't feel comfortable with putting people and other people in danger so i've i've come up with something on my walk today that i'm out here a little earlier today i can't do it later i'm super busy but i came up with something that i have to try to figure out where where is your dog so I came up with the scale and, and the scale is I've got five different situations here and each situation you got to train your dog and teach your dog differently in each one. You can't use a universal that they're all going to work where I'm going to say there's a universal to start to get the dog to understand what we want. But the next process after this initial standing neutral and hanging with your dog, you, you got to do something different to be able to get some results because otherwise if you use a technique on one scenario, you can get bit and or you're going to start teaching your dog to bite what it's looking at, what it's fixed data, what it's reactive towards. And you want to make sure that that's not going on. So I got the first category, and I'm going to make a video about each of these categories. But I just want to give a category to say, you, you may be in the middle of one, but there's one that you're leaning towards that you need to figure out where your dog is to figure out what we're going to do next. Because you have to figure out what's going on with the dog. Again, this, is, this, this isn't stuff that, that I've just created, that I thought of. I give all the praise, all the glory to Jesus. And if you accept that, reject that. But there's one thing that I'm going to say is I just have some things that I have to say and I don't really understand how I figure it out at the same time and why I just don't see other people talking about simple things. And that's something that I heard a trainer the other day saying, if you can't explain it to a simple way, you know, maybe it's not for you. And it's something that I've realized that I have to figure out how to be able to do better. And if I can do it in a way, then clearly, I guess I understand a little bit what I'm talking about. Not because I, I'm, the, I'm the one. No, I don't care. I give all the glory to Jesus because he's allowed me to be on this planet to do, do what, I, what I need to do. So these five stages here, we need to figure out where, where are you so that we can figure out the underlining cause, the underlining issue. I cannot correct the dog for barking without understanding why the dog is barking. I cannot give a treat to a dog that's barking if I do not understand why the dog is barking. So stage one is a confident dog. A confident dog is not barking. It is not growling. It is not showing teeth. It is neutral. It is hanging out. A confident dog can see a reactive dog barking two feet from its face and just look at it like, okay, great. A confident dog. That's where not many people's dogs are, but some are. And I have a whole video of what we need to start doing with the people that have these confident dogs to be able to help out the, the, the rest of this, this league that's going on here. The next dog that I'm going to see is the confident dog, but the, I would like to use the word of arrogant, where it's, it's, it's secure. But it only barks because this is the issue that we're having. I remember a dog only barks at some dogs, but not all dogs. Some people, but not all people. This is where things get complicated that we need to figure things out. Because your dog is confident. But when the other dog is reactive, is giving that language to your dog of like, get out of here, I want to fight, your dog is going to now bark at that dog. Where it's, it's, it's confident knowing that it's good, but it has it in itself to just, just I'm tough, man. I'm going to stand up for myself. And not really understanding that the handler, the owner of the dog, is able to, to just get, get them through that. So when the dog is given no language of, I want to fight, this dog is cool. He's like, oh, what's up, man? How's it going? So he's cool with, say, 50% of the dogs, 80% of the dogs, 99% of the dogs. But there's that one dog that your dog sees, and it just barks, man. It's just going crazy. And it's, in reality, all for show. Because a confident dog doesn't, knows that he don't need to go to battle. He's, he's cool, man. He, he knows that, that dog, he's just telling that dog, you stay the heck away. And I can because I can. There, there, that's another level where I'm going to say two. Then there's a third level. where This is where things start to get a little more complicated. Because now you got the dog that is barking and it's doing the, the lunging stuff. It's doing the, the, the just, just, just going crazy. It's, it's spinning on leash. It's, it's, it's ahead of you. It is going way far ahead of you and it is displaying and acting and making sounds that terrify you. You're like, what the heck's going on? And this is the stage where the dog is doing it because it thinks that the owner is telling it to do that. It doesn't want to do that, so that's why it keeps getting worse because the dog is not confident. 
the dog is lacking that confidence and it needs its human to be able to get its confidence to be able to do what the human is telling the, this dog to do. So this is why it looks wild and it gets worse and worse and worse that they're lunging more and more and more because they don't have the confidence and they know that when the human is there. So this is why you can, someone can take that dog and, and walk that dog and the dog stops doing that because it now has the confidence of the human that's gonna be able to take care of it, but yet we still have the issue that the dog itself is not confident. So we need to build the confidence of that dog up. And then we have another stage, the stage four that I'm gonna say. And this is where things get not, not more complicated, but just harder to work through. And just, just know each, each lower layer I go, it's gonna take you longer and longer and longer to be able to get your dog out of this because it's confidence building. My number one thing is confidence building and trust building and relationship building, not dog training. That's what I have written on my card right up front is confidence building. That's, all, that's a good dog, is a confident dog. They're, they're satisfied. Now we run into the situation that we have a fearful dog and we have a dog that also knows and sees that the human is fearful. This is where we run into a, a sticky situation where the human, in the first one, say the other one, where the dog is at the end of the leash, it also thinks that you're a little scared, but it knows that, that you, it, it's got securing, that you're, you're a little confident yourself. You're not like too fearful. But you run in that scenario where the dog is not confident and then the dog is fearful as all heck can be. So then you have that dog that is barking right next to your side. It doesn't go ahead. It's actually barking and it gets behind you and it's barking, it's barking, it's barking, but it stays around you. It's, it's not at the end of the leash at the end because it's like, hey, please get out of here. And then he's, he's like looking at you for that security, but he's not really getting it from you because you're also doing language to the dog that's making you a little scared. Not that you're scared or that you're scared of what would happen. This is what the dogs see in the moment. They don't pre-think and think later and think what happened before, they're in the moment. So the dog is looking at you like, please get that out of here. He's barking, barking, she's barking, and you're just like, I don't know what to do. And that's, this is a hard, that's a hard one to get your dog out of. It's easier to get your dog if it's the end of the leash compared to when the dog is running behind you. You have a lot of confidence building to do into that dog. And not only that, you have a lot of relationship building to build with that dog because the dog doesn't trust you. It doesn't believe that you, you are able to, to help it, protect it, to do anything for it. It's, it's, it's looking for it, but it, it, it feels like it's, it's lost in this world. And then I got the, the lowest stage here. Not that any of these are better or worse in reality, because it just depends on what you're looking for. The lowest stage is the one that I'm gonna say is gonna be, when you get this dog through its problems, you're gonna have the best dog that you're never, ever, ever gonna stop talking about for the remainder of your life. You're never gonna forget this dog, but it's hard. It's hard because this is the dog that when it sees what is threat, what is a dog reacts at it, it's gone. It, it, it will break your arm. It's running away. It pees itself. It poops itself. It submits and lays down and rolls over and it, it freezes. It has no idea. It's literally out of here. Not even so much of freezing. It is gone. I've worked many dogs that it sees dog. It don't go at the end of the leash. It don't go come next to me to look for me to like get it close to me. It is gone. It is, <laughs> they, they have a mission that they're like, I'm out of here and please get me back into the house where it's nice and safe, or put me in a kennel, put me in a crate where it's nice and safe, and let me stay there. That dog has zero confidence, and it has zero uh, uh, a relationship with you of knowing that you are gonna be there for them. It thinks it's all on its own, and it is terrified. These are just some stages that I've just realized that we gotta figure out where our dog is to figure out what to do next. Because if you have a dog that is confident but it's just being a little butthead of barking at a random dogs here and there. And you put a collar on that dog and you pull on that leash. If, if you're not set up right, that dog's gonna bite you. It's gonna turn around and it's gonna come back and it's gonna petite on you somewhere, somewhere on your body. And this happens so many of the times. And this is the, a big reason why you're gonna give up and have to rehome that dog because now you're scared of it because it actually punctured you, it hurt you, it, it, it damaged you. Because the dog is, it's in its, I know what I'm doing, I know what's going on, I know what I make it happen. And if you don't teach that dog what pressure releases, re releases, that dog is going to bite you. And then you got the other dog that uh, out underneath that, that is at the end of the leash lunging, just going crazy, going wild. If you give that dog a correction or give it too much leash pressure or do anything, there's some terms that I'll talk about more with the correction and leash pressure. They're completely different. But if you give it too much and it's not knowing what's going on, you are now convincing that dog to want to attack and bite and go crazy at whatever it is that it's, tr that it's triggering. If that's a kid, it's gonna think I need to bite and destroy a kid because it's gonna feel pressure on its collar and it's gonna think I need to 
Uh, that did it to me. That did it to me. Because the confident dog knows that you did it to it. So it's going to turn around and bite you. Like, hey, what the heck's going on here? I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't need you to tell me what to do. And that's your sticky situation. And, and, then, and then if you're giving it that dog, that dog pressure at the end of the leash, and you're, it's fixated on a dog, and it thinks that it needs to bite that dog, you're, you're, you're setting up for, for extreme danger. Because if that dog ever gets loose from that leash, you're going to run into that. It's going to bite the kid. It's going to bite the dog. And it may, and it, and depending on the dog that it meets, if two of those dogs meet head to head, they're, they're in a battle. You're going to the hospital. Maybe not you as a human, but you're going to animal hospital because something's going down. But if your dog runs up to a confident dog, it's more likely nothing's going to happen. Your dog may nip that dog, that confident dog. That confident dog's going to look at it like, buddy, I gave you one chance, but get the heck away. And there's not going to be too much of a tiff. And this is where we need to understand where our dogs are and where our relationship is to figure out where we're going to go next. Because if you use a technique to teach your dog to get more amplified, to go out and actually attack, you're, you are now setting your dog to be a danger to society. And that's, that's a very, very challenging thing. And then on the way, way bottom of that, if your dog is extremely fearful that it just runs off, you are also running into a situation that now we have a loose dog that we're never going to, not never, but we're not going to find this dog. He's going to be gone. Dogs will run. Y'all know with fireworks and thunderstorms, the dogs are, when they find where they are, they are like miles from their homes. They go, man. They just run and they run and they run until they just calm down. And five minutes for a dog running, running, running. I mean, they travel dang near two miles at that moment, running a good 25, 30 miles an hour. And then they're slowing down from that, another mile, slowing down a little bit until they're almost calm, another mile. They're four or five miles gone. They are gone. They are gone. That is so dangerous. Because not only just for you yourself, but for what the dog could do to, to traffic, for instance. It could hit my car and jam things up. Could just could just mess up some things. With each of these, we have to, to know that some of them don't ever think of using the word term correction. Because you're going to put yourself and your relationship in danger. If you have a dog that's taken off, and you try to just give it a leash, leash, uh, uh, a leash correction, you, you're done. You're done. That dog was not going to trust you. It already doesn't, and it's going to look at you like, I forget you. We're done. And you got to do so much to build that up. And you might as well get on a subscription of a good treat company because you're going to start using a lot of treats for that dog. And that's the dogs that I say that I don't really see too often, but you're going to need a lot. You're going to have to treat. You, buddy, we're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. All the time, everywhere, all the time at home, everything that's going on. And different dogs, you don't want to go that route. If a dog is, is confident but a little arrogant, that's just still reacting at few dogs just because it thinks it's tough. If you throw a treat at that dog in that state, the dog's like, okay, well, I'll do it. I'll do it better next time. And it can amplify it. It can make it worse. So we need to know where we're at. And then the, then the dog that's like in the middle. That dog, it's, it's going to come down to what the, the, the human and the dog as a pairing are going to be able to get to be able to make it into a better place. Sometimes the treats are going to be, be good to go. Other times the treats aren't going to. Sometimes it needs to be a leash correction. Other times the leash correction just isn't there. That's going to come down to what each individual human, owner of that dog, wants to do with their dog. And you can't just assume that this is going to work. No, you got to do what's going to work for you. Because if you give a dog a leash correction and the dog looks back at you and it sees that you don't like that, it's reading our bodies real time, real time. It's not perceiving what is, what is. So if your feelings are like, oh, I don't, I can't, I don't, even though I know it helped, even though I see the success with it, you, you can't muster that, then don't do it because your dog is reading that and it's going to confuse the heck out of, the, out of your dog. But if you give it a treat and the dog sees that and it sees that you're happy, you're excited, it's like, hey, we can, we can keep doing that. Like, this is, this, I could, I could, I could get through this in, in no time with you because I see what's going on. You enjoy it. I enjoy it. Not that you're ever, ever going to enjoy giving your dog a correction, but you have, you, you just know that you have to do things sometimes to be able to get your dog past some things sometimes. Some things we just have to do that we don't like. And we, and sometimes if we, the more and more we run away from it, the worse and worse that it's going to get. And sometimes we just got to head straight into it. That I've done this. I've given a dog a correction and they're, they're done. It's done. They used to react and go flip out, go crazy for years. Three, four, five, six year old dogs, they've been doing it for their whole life. And all of a sudden I come in and I do that once. I show the owner how to just stop and hold the leash and just wait there and let them hit the, hit the end of it. And the dog is done. They never ever react at another dog again. Another person, never nothing. They're 100% complete. This happens to some dogs. But most dogs don't work that way. 
You want to go slow and steady. And something that I want to say for, for a disclaimer up front, do not think that this is going to be working in two, three, four weeks. I want to give you a minimum of three to four months to start to see something substantially better. And then another minimum, I want to see a year solid of, of just constantly doing the method that you're doing to be able to see like things are good. And then another year after that, you should never see a reaction anymore. And then after that, you should say, oh, my dog's pretty good at this point. So in, in just about two to be about two years is where you want to see your dog knowing that it's not going to react to any, it's good, it's confident, it's chill, it knows, it's fine, it sees other dogs that are reacting, it just looks at them like, let me help you out with that, because I used to be in that. And that's the language that why majority of dogs do not react when they see my dogs. Because my dog, I know they're just looking, especially my Johnny, he just got this dead face like, we done, we good, it's okay man, relax. And the dogs don't, don't react. And that's where we need more people with more confident dogs to be able to help out the ones that are not so confident so that we can have a balance here of things being good. We're worried about the, the balance of the training. We need to have a balance of the society of where our dogs are at. If more dogs are reactive, more dogs will be. If more dogs are confident, more dogs will be. That's just what it is. And we need to be people that just want to be, some of us work dogs, man. We just love them like absolute crazy. I work mine to a point. I'm not this hardcore and all the little obedience and doing everything and making, no, I want them to be very confident, very confident. That's the main thing that I work on with my dogs. The one thing that my Johnny is slacking in right now is, is the donkey. Well, I get it, man. I, that's just an extreme level of pressure because the donkey wants to kill him. And I have him sitting in the donkey, he's literally 10 feet away. And I have him in a downstay. So some of my videos, you see that he's kind of nervous. It's, it's, he's, he's nervous because there's an a, a animal that wants to kill him right in front of him. And, and I'm working them through that. You know, you're confident, man. You can actually make this donkey run away, especially when we're together. You by yourself out there, <laughs> buddy, I don't know. But when we're together, I can tell that donkey, like, get out of here. We're good. Everything is fine. So I'm working on that confidence building with my dogs. And the more confidence I can build them, the more that they're going to be able to help out the other dog that is just flipping out. The dog's going to look at him and say, oh, everything is okay because there's nothing to, to, to beef about here. And we want to for sure get the dogs that are out of that trying to be arrogant a little bit because that's where my dog that I take for the lake all the time was for a very long time. He's very confident. He's, he's secure with himself. But when he would see a dog reacting, oh, he would, he would match that energy and try to times 10 it. Like, I'm bigger. I'm better. I'm tougher. I'm, 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 I'm more on top. I'm the one that's in control out here. And I had to say, hey, buddy, no, actually, I'm the one that's in control out here. And you just come on, follow my lead, and we're good. Let's go this way. And he's gotten out of that. But for him... I've given, <laughs> this is why I was terrified. I was terrified of this dog when I brought him home because I already knew where he was. I knew a lot about him, but there was one time that I was working him at the school and I had some stuff I had to do. I was like trying to fast track it, trying to fast track some obedience routines with him. And I gave this dude a leash correction and he turned around and looked at me. Thankfully, he didn't bite me, but he looked at me like, buddy, if you try that one more time, I promise you, I'm putting you in the hospital. And I got terrified. I was like, uh, let's just go back to playing and having fun. So all these techniques and all these things I've seen in all these different dogs and everyone that I keep on working with. I just see the same stuff over and over again. And I just instantly come in and just classify where I'm at. What's going on here? Where's our relationship and what's happening? Where's the dog? How does the dog see you? How's the world? Because an extremely confident dog, they, are, they, they love you like crazy because they know that you are going to take care of everything for them. And I'm like, y'all, relationship is like premium. Now it's time to work on some downstays, some sit stays, some perfect healing. Now we can do stuff like that because your pairing is, is flawless. The dog is willing to listen to you for anything and everything. Now let's worry about a sit stay. But if your dog is in any other state, get them out of that. Build their confidence up so that they trust you, they respect you, they love you, they appreciate you in every scenario, every place. And then your dog will down for you regardless. You just say the word and they're just, they will do it. There's no like battles. There's no fighting. There's no the dog like sitting there kind of nervous. The main battle you're going to get is because the dog is scared. It's scared of where they're at. It's scared of what the other dogs may do to it. It's scared of what's going to come up and happen to it. But if that dog is confident and he's trusting in you and you say down, the dog's going to just lay down. He's going to lay there. He's not going to challenge it. We get challenged a lot because the dog is a little, I, I, I'm unsure and I don't know. And that's what happens with me and my border collie. He's like, dude, I got to be on my feet to, what if something comes up? What if something comes behind you? That's why most of the time he's always like right here behind me. He's, he's like, what if something, because up front, he knows I'm good. But he's like, what if something gets you behind? So he's like, I got to be on my feet and be around and make sure things are okay. So when I tell him down and stay down, he's like, we're, we're battling. 
because he's not 100% in tune with knowing that, say, everything is fine out here. But at the same time, I want him because I've ran into sticky situations out here, people. I, I, I got random animals out here running around, even down to a baby-sized rooster, man. These roosters are tough. I've gotten hurt by two of them so far in my life, and they hurt. They punctured my hand here, and it hurt for weeks, and one hit my leg to the point that I couldn't walk for two days. They strong. So I got roosters that are running up behind me, and something's always running up behind me. They never come to the front. So this dude is on edge. So he's like, I got I to gotta pay attention to what's going on. And I appreciate that because he's, he's not a pet dog. He's a working dog to keep me safe out here for one and to move my animals to keep my land safe. But that's not what everybody has. So I wouldn't want you to, to worry about getting your dog like that. That's, 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 that's show TV, TV show stuff. That's not reality. When you see certain things that he does in certain ways that I communicate to him, those are those, 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 those tricks, I'm going to say. But as far as your dog being able to just do what you ask, it comes down to that relationship of knowing that it trusts you. And it's something that you, 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 you want to get that confidence first before you're sitting, I said sit. Because you're, you're going to be fighting that sit. And then your dog is going to lose trust in you. It's going to lose the, 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 the confidence that it had of realizing that you, you got its back. Because when a dog is react, this is what a, a method that I get it. But I understand the behavior of the dogs more than the obedience of the dogs. Because there's some trainers out here. They're worried about how can I get a dog to do a perfect uh, a focused heel? How can I get them to do better sit stays? How can I get them to do better down stays? I'm the trainer that's like, I see the, 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 rela the, the relationship of the dog. I see the, the state of, are they sad? Are they happy? What's going on with them? How can I motivate the dog to be able to want to do something for me? Without, I need a treat and I need a toy. But just in a way of getting a dog to just know that I got its back. I got your back. I look at dogs that way. I don't look at how to get a dog to sit. I never have. And that's one thing I loved about the, uh, the dog training school that I went to. Because it's not all about getting a dog to sit. It's all, it's, for me personally, what I was understanding and seeing and reading was more about the behavior of the dog. Understanding why the dog was doing a certain thing. And then trying to help the dog to get out of that situation. Without having to, to go to force and go to this and go to that. But then there's a whole other side of it that someone saw something probably more likely completely different than me. I was watching every single dog with every single student in there, every single animal, seeing how every single relationship was going on. It was the most beautiful thing for me to be able to see. And that's why I've been able to see the differences of some of these dogs. I saw the dog right away, the internship of, of you put leash pressure on that dog, I mean, a, a correction on that dog, and it's going to bite you. I saw that over and over and over and over again. I was like, what the heck's going on here? And then I started seeing it with helping people. That's why your dog, it's two ways I've noticed your dog's biting you. It's play, because it's uh. It's, it's just, it's playing with you like it's playing with the dog. They put their mouths on each other. They're just putting on your arms. But it's nothing that's like serious that you're going to the hospital. And the other one is the dog that you said no to and that dog challenged you. And that dog said, no, I don't know who, who you think you are. And it came back and it put teeth on you to the point that you, you lost work for a couple days to a couple of weeks because the dog got serious. And then when that happens, it's hard to stay in a home with a dog like that. Because once that happens, it's like you, you lost trust. But I'm telling you, your dog can bounce back from that. Your dog can 100, I'm, I'm, I hate to say this like this, but I'm going to because I've seen it over and over. But I can promise you that your dog can bounce back from that, that they will never do that to you again. But you have to make sure you're, you're giving that dog what it needs and you're respecting that dog. And you're, you're building that dog's confidence to realize that you, you, you are strong and not weak to have to worry about doing that too. Not strong that I'm going to dictate and abuse and destroy you, but strong that I, I know what's going on with you, man. I know that you're tough. I know that you're strong. And I know that you want to show that and express that sometimes. But the way you're doing it is inappropriate. And let me show you how to do that in a better way. And that's where a lot of the toy stuff comes in that makes things better. But certain stages that you're at with your dog, don't worry about even doing too much play with that dog because you may be destroying that relationship. You're thinking you're getting better. Oh, we're playing tug. Yeah, we're building it. But you may be ruining your relationship based on where you're at right now. If you're trying to get your dog to sit, you may be ru ruining your relationship because your dog doesn't trust you. And it's like, dude, you're trying to force me to do something that is putting me in danger. You're not going to be able to protect me. That's what's going on with the dog here. And, and we got to let the dog know, no, I am going to protect you. I am going to keep you safe. If I tell you to sit right here, I know there's some scary stuff out there, but I'm going to keep you safe, man. If something comes around you, I'm going to get it to go away. The dogs need to have that belief in us. And once they do, it's, it's easy. All this is easy. That's why we, we're, we're trying to start with like the obedience stuff, the sits, the downs, the, the heels, the place, all this stuff. 
too soon before we get the dog to have the confidence to be able to do such a thing. That's why you don't get a dog that, to do these, these high class, uh, 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 what do you call it, these shows, the, the, the agility, not agility's all right, I like agility, but uh, the, uh, the, the heel to dance, to, to music, the, uh, the protection sports, the competition heel work. There's no like shy, insecure dogs out there doing that. These are some very bold, very knowing how good they are, very loving with their handler dogs out here that are doing that. And that's, it's cool and all, that's great, but they started off with a really nice dog already. They're not taking a trash, insecure dog. That's where I would like to see a, a, a new sport to be brought up. Y your qualifications are, let me see what the dog looked like up front so that we can know that it was like that. And then now we're out here doing this competition to see like, that's, that's magical how you're able to get that dog from that. Because dogs that look normal today, we don't know where they started. And, and it, that owner knows because they went through a lot just to get the dog to look normal, to get it to walk loose leash walk, to be able to be in an env every environment. You've done so much work, but no one even gives a crap. Not that, you know, you should need that validation, but there, it would be neat to be able to share that experience so someone else can get some confidence themselves. Because they're all out here like, I'm the best and I got it. It's like, just, just show us the, 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 the oh, I, 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 <laughs> we're gonna show up use that word. The trash that we started in, man. The, the disagreements that we had, and let's see where we are now. Who cares if the dog isn't in this perfect, the focused heel and doing this stuff. You know, that, that's cool and all for, for some people. But for most of us, we want to see like the real. Where were you at and where are you now? What's going on? And that's something that we should focus more of our time on as opposed to thinking that my dog needs to be this elite looking athlete. No, they start off in reality as that and they just continue to keep staying in that. Just get your dog to be normal looking. We're all out here normal looking. There's not many of us that are just so ex extravagant and elaborate and all that. We're just regular folks, man. We're regular people. But we got to figure out where we are with our relationship with our dog to figure out where we're going to go next. If you use the wrong technique in the wrong stage of where your relationship is, I'm telling you, you're going to, for one, put yourself in danger, put someone else in danger, and or get way worse inside of your own home because your relationship is going to just going to con continue to keep on getting worse and worse. And, and that's something that we should do our absolute best to figure out how to get, get away from that. And, and I can't just say, do this without knowing what's going on. So the next videos I'm gonna make are talking about the confident dog, talking about the, the arrogant, pushy dog, talking about the, the one that thinks it needs to go to battle for you dog. Talk about the dog that is just, it, it, it's scared and it doesn't trust you dog. And the dog that is just, doesn't trust you at all and is just running the heck away, trying to get out of it, knowing that it's gotta protect its own self because no one's got its back. To, to figure out where, what to do in those scenarios. And then from there, once you figure that out and get a little insight of where to start with with that, then that's where you find the extra help to specialize in what's exactly going on with you, to figure out the next plans. So that's what's going on now, what's going on today. Not the what ifs and what coulds and all these weird situations, but to be able to, to look at what, what, what is going on with me. And that's where phone consultations come in. That's where video consultations come in. That's where you find someone to bring them in at that moment where you finally realize where you're at. So then you can actually get some help. And again, this isn't two weeks, man. Give it time. The faster you try to rush it, that's where I'm gonna say a trainer should be able to take three to four months and turn it into three to four weeks to three to four days. That's where a trainer should be able to come in and do that. But for you trying to be able to get your dog good, and even if a trainer comes in and gets it in three to four weeks and three to four days, I still would say to you, give it a year of doing what it is that you're working on every day, seeing it get better and better and better. A year and stay at it and stay dedicated with it. And then you're gonna realize that it's, it's pretty much gone. And then give it another year to just sit in it and just realize like things are good. My dog hasn't reacted in eight months. Cool, my dog hasn't reacted in a whole year. And then you're gonna look at it and say, my dog just doesn't do that anymore. Give it time. It's not overnight, but you have to find that thing that you're getting better success each day. And that's something that I would wanna be able to explain a simple thing that wherever you are, that you could see a huge amount of success in just a few days to motivate you to say, okay, I'm gonna keep trying, I'm gonna keep doing this. Knowing that it's gonna have days that aren't that great. Knowing that days are gonna look really good. My dog went to the park today and there was 50 dogs and didn't bark at a single one. I'm good to go. No, you're not good to go yet. <laughs> you, gotta, you got time. Because tomorrow it may see one dog and it may flip out to the point that 
you're crying. You're like, what the heck is going on right now? And we have to know that it's going to take time. But I want you to see success and success and success with doing simple things each day. And that's where you're going to be able to get into a better place. So I hope that I can be able to make this in a way to be able to get people to understand more about your dog and stop looking at someone else's dog and what's going on over here and over there. Because I'm telling you, what I do with mine, it's not going to work with you. It's not. I'm me. I, my dogs are mine. My dogs, uh, day one when I got to them, started to mold and be what I do. And they start to mold and be like how I am. And, and, and it's something that we should pay more attention to what we're looking for from our dogs. A lot of us are scared, man. And I get it. You're scared out there. You're scared of people. But you do not want your dog to be in a stressful stance of, I need to guard and protect everybody away. The dog's presence is pretty much normally enough to deter a majority of people. So we can calm the dogs down. Because when a dog, that's why I love a confident dog. Because they're just, they're, they're looking at the, the scared, stressed, fearful one. It's like, keep building up. Keep getting that energy. Because you're not thinking clearly. You're not, you're, you're, you're just in reaction, instinctual, I'm going to go mode. Where the confident dog is thinking through. He, he's, he's putting his punches together. He's like, I'm about to get that foot. I'm about to get that ear. And I'm about to go over there. Because when these fights happen, it's fast. And the confident dog always is on top. Because it just, <laughs> it knows what it's doing. And it puts that plan together and then it makes it happen. That fearful dog is like, ah, and it runs away. Because it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's sporadic, it's crazy. We gotta get them to be thinking and slow them down and calm them down so that they can realize that, hey, every, everything is okay. There's no fight here, there's no battle here. There's no reason to go into this. And it, and it starts with getting the dog calm. And I'll talk about that tomorrow. Thank you.